Like a glacier moving over a great expanse of land, great sheets of water would move down the state through what was then the great expanse of Everglades. South Florida was a giant marsh fed by rainfall. Theoretically, a drop of water could fall on a leaf in the upper chain of lakes, travel down the meandering Kissimmee River, float over the natural southern shore of Lake Okeechobee, ride the sheet of water slowly gliding over the southern peninsula, and finally drift into Florida Bay. Our history has been one of dredge and drain the swamp. To make way for development and population growth, historical water flows have been significantly altered over time. South of Lake Okeechobee, a series of stormwater treatment areas, or constructed wetlands, are successfully removing excess nutrients from runoff water before it enters the remnant Everglades system. The Everglades is divided into two sections to recognize the importance and connectivity of the entire Everglades ecosystem, both north and south of Lake Okeechobee. The premise of the Comprehensive Everglades Restoration Plan, or SERP, is to provide the right amount of water and flow conditions to the Everglades, while providing water for urban and agricultural needs to accommodate a 50-year population projection. A major goal of SERP is to target those things degrading the Everglades from the outside. SERP will return most of the pre-drainage flows to Everglades National Park. Hydrological restoration, or restoring the natural timing and distribution of water, is the cornerstone to revitalizing the Everglades.